Okay. All right, good evening. It's uh, July 16, 2019, and this is a meeting of the Shrewsbury Conservation Commission. Our first item is to review and approve minutes. There are no minutes. The second item is to sign the bills. Moving on to item three, meetings and hearings. Our first meeting is a continued public hearing regarding the notice of intent filed by Richard Bedzegian for the construction of a single family home and associated improvements at 35 and 37 Melvin Avenue. Good evening, how are you this evening? Good, good, good. Thanks. Chuck Scott from CFS Engineering were the, the engineers that designed the, uh, the single family home on the, uh, the properties on Melvin Ave. And, uh, on Melvin Ave. Um, we were here back in, uh, in April. Uh, it's taken us some time to get some revised plans uh, back to you. We've got them back to you last week. Uh, essentially, what we've done on the plan before you, as you see it, um, we had a, a zoning issue that we had to rectify. Um, Melvin Avenue is, we were accessing off of Gray, Graylock Avenue, uh, but Melvin Avenue also requires a front yard setback as well. Then we, we were encroaching upon that with our original design, so we had to redesign the whole thing. As such, we've downsized the house a little bit and actually have flipped it 180 degrees where the, the access point comes in off of uh, Greylock Avenue. The Chuck, do you have a drawing that you could put on the board for the public in case somebody's interested and they'll get a... Um, just for reference purposes, north is directly towards me. Uh, we have Melvin Avenue uh, on the easterly side of the site, Greylock on the northerly side, and Sadler's up, uh, over here on the excuse me, easterly, this is the westerly side, excuse me. <laughs> um, we're here for a notice of intent uh, to construct a single family home on this particular lot. The wetlands are delineated right along Kings Brook uh, that runs through the property in this area here. That's defined as the, the green lines on your particular plan in front of you. Uh, we've applied a 30 foot no structure zone off of the limit of the wetlands, and then further out you have the 100-foot uh, buffer zone, which is also the inner riparian zone, and then way out here off-site you have the 200-foot outer riparian zone. Um, there's no work within a wetland resource area BBW. Uh, there is work uh, within the riverfront area, but because this is a <coughs> lot that was generated prior to 96, it's grandfathered, uh, therefore we can construct a single family house lot on this particular lot. We um, do have floodplain associated with Kings Brook that runs through the property and we've done the analysis and provided the, the supporting plans that show uh, the actual floodplain filled as part of the proposed work as well as the compensatory floodplain storage provided as part of our manipulation of the, of the lot. Um, the, uh, again, it, it's the, when we were back here in April, um, at that point, if we didn't have the, the zoning issue, uh, the one comment made by the commission was our deck was encroaching into the 30 foot no structure zone. We've actually been able to manipulate it. So no portion or any of any structure being built here will be within the 30 foot no structure zone. Um, don't want to make it more complicated than it is, but uh, we were here before. We have modified the plans. We've addressed all the, the comments uh, made by the Conservation Commission's agent. Um, and the, what you see before here addresses any and all of those comments. Chuck, uh, Brad hasn't been around for a while. Can you 
Do you have the comment letter right there that you could go point by point uh, sure. to, this is last third in April, I think, uh, to refresh our memory on. Right. Because wasn't there some issue on the compensatory storage too? No, he, he did not have any comments on Nothing that. Nothing in that letter. He, he just indicated that he wanted the, the boundaries of the floodway defined. They were shown on the plan and they, it, it transitions as you go from Melvin down to Sadler. Okay. Uh, at Melvin, it's, it's represented uh, 398.5. <clears throat> soon as you come into the site, it drops to 397.2. It runs down through this, this lot at 397.2, and then it drops again 396.75 down towards Sadler Ave. So it, it transitions down as you come through the property, and that's just from based upon the topographic conditions out there. Um, so what we've mapped is the floodplains for what is Melvin Avenue, the 398.5, and then the 397.2 floodplains. So we've mapped them both just to, to make, because it transitions through the property. Um, so we've added that to the plan. But from a compensatory storage standpoint, uh, all the floodplain that we are altering, we are providing at, at a minimum the amount altered plus plus an additional. And I can show you the individual plans for that. Those would be your third and four sheets in your plan set. I'm sorry, which three, one? Three and four. The third and fourth sheet in your plan set. Yeah, there you go. So on this side of the sheet, what we have are the actual, the portion of the floodplain filled due to the proposed construction. Um, and in this case, at elevation 395, which is the lowest part of the site, we'd be altering 314 square feet. Um, but due to how we manipulate the proposed contours with the, new, with the proposed construction, we're able to add back in 332 feet of compensatory area, so a greater amount than what was filled. And we've done that at every elevation analyzed all the way up to 397.2. And that's what the second sheet will represent too as well. And we've provided a summary of the, the floodplain altered, the total cumulative floodplain altered, and then the, the compensatory floodplain altered is provided on, on as a table on each of those sheets. What else is on that? Uh, there was just the representation of uh, making sure the address was correct on the page. That was the first comment. Um, the registry of deeds, the deeds are referenced on the plan for both properties. Um, work is being proposed within the riverfront. Um, and he, we addressed actually this right before our meeting that night and provided him an update of the amount of riverfront altered. Even though we're all, we're, we're grandfathered as part of this lot, we still need to provide the, the computations with the riverfront area altered. Um, and those, those are on the, on the first page of the riverfront area summary. And they've been updated based upon this, the new plan. And by riverfront altered, how are you defining that, Chuck? On we define it both within the 100 foot inner riparian and then from the 100 foot to the, the outer riparian foot. also. Yeah. Okay, on both. Um, and then the base flood elevations have been shown and are shown on the plan. Um, as we talked about earlier, 398.5 as you, and then 397.2 and 396.75 as you come through the property. There was some uh, editing that he wanted on the, we provided a cross section on the second sheet <coughs> of that plan set, uh, which is a cross section of how the stru structure will sit with regard to 
the actual floodplain that's represented in through here. Um, now, as part of this entire new redesign, the entire basement floor elevation is up out of the the what would be the the floodplain in this area that 397.2. Um, the actual basement floor elevation is 399.5. So we're about two and a half feet. And that's actually to the garage floor as you come in. So in the basement will be just slightly higher than that. So it's a nice little cushion there for us with regard to this particular property. Um, stockpiling of materials is kind of difficult. We're, the, the entire property is within the inner riparian zone and the 100-foot buffer zone. Um, we have kept it outside the 300-foot, the 30-foot no structure zone, uh, but it's located in this area here. Uh, really not much other place we can put it. Uh, with regard to the overall work area. Um, the next comment was regarding the, the block walls. Uh, we had, we're specking on the plan VersaLock, um, but we've also added a note on all, each one of these walls uh, or approved equal. Um, if it works out to be better that we maybe go with a watch use and precast concrete block, which is a, essentially a four by two by two foot uh, deep block. That may be better from an overall construction standpoint and to hold up to any of the flooding conditions that will occur under a hundred year flood. There was a house that was, was somewhere up in this region here that was built on piles, and he was making a suggestion to that, but I think we've been able to represent that we're not going to uh, impact the overall floodplain because we're able to compensate for any area that we've altered. And the last question with regard, it was regarding the zoning summary. Um, that we had treated Melvin as a side yard setback, and now it's treated as a front yard setback. Is that it, Chuck? You ready for questions? Thomas, you ready for questions? Sure. Um, thanks for de detailing all the, the um, floodplain um, re replacement compensation. Can you remind me what you're doing for drainage for the house itself when it when it rains? Where is that water going? The water for the houses would just be a gutter system coming down to a downspout and just discharging. Where? Um, to the ground right adjacent to the house. Okay. All right. That's all I have. Thank you. Bob? No questions at this time. Uh, Andy, why don't you talk to one? You got the plans too. Yeah, we got the plans Friday morning, so I have not had a chance to review them. Uh, we also just got plans, so we'll need updated you know, uh, wetland forms with all the updated calculations and stuff in it. So at this point, you know, we'll need some time to review yeah. submitted plans, so we recommend continuance. We won't be able to close it tonight, Chuck. We're just getting the plans on Friday and need to look at them. Um, I will would just ask that um, if you considered conditioning the plan to meet final approval of any of the, of the boards and, or, and, and, and the departments, that we could address those comments as a condition if you were to move forward and, and to act on, on the permit tonight. Um, well, the, <coughs> the problem with that is that it's, if we act on it tonight, it starts a clock. 10 day clock, and uh, if we do find something that's that's amiss about the plans, we, we wouldn't have time to react. 
So. And um, there technically, is a report. Or, or if, if, but if, I don't mean to speak in. On no, your no I mean technically it's incomplete anyway because we don't have the updated NOI file, yeah. so it's not even like. <clears throat> so really. Yeah, this has been, I mean, we've been waiting since April for revised plans, Chuck, and just getting them a couple of days ago. We're going to need some time to take a look at them, and we would rather not close it because any deficiencies will require a refiling. We won't be able to take public comment or anything again. So, you know, you don't want to shoot yourself in the foot either by reacting too quickly. No, but I feel confident that we'll be, yeah, know, hopefully, we'll be able to, to address everything. Ho hopefully everything will work out well and we can close it uh, at the next meeting. We appreciate the yeah. thoroughness of your presentation and what you've done to address all the issues. Yeah. But we still have to check it out. Yeah. Okay. And why don't we, Andy, do you have anything else? That was, no, that was the biggest thing. I mean, I'm really up to it. Does so. anyone in the public have any questions or comments on this hearing tonight? Okay, I don't see any. And our next meeting, Andy, do you? Uh, are we on 20th. Still for, is it the 20th? Yep. Nothing's bumping us. Okay, our next meeting will be August 20th, if anyone is interested in, in attending. Okay, Chuck. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. <laughs>
So they did the work. Obviously, they're going to be on top of it to make sure that it functions. If there's anything else that Correct. needs to be done, maybe do a little more yep. firming. They'll fine tune it. Um, but they did make those corrections. <coughs> and as I said, um, based on, on your comments, we did segment uh, that trench drain so you don't have a continuous run. If it does heavy rain, it, it'll dump it off towards the wetland. So we're kind of segmenting the runoff. That's We're capturing it and treating it. Um, the driveway runoff and then directing it down towards the wetland where it's supposed to go. Um, so those were the, the two items that we addressed. Um, if there's anything beyond that, we'd, we'd love to answer any questions. And I don't have any questions. Bob? Uh, no, I guess that's it. Thank you for doing that. No problem. Thank you. Yeah, yeah no, <coughs> yeah, no as, as Jim said, we're out there Friday. Timed it perfectly, but you know we dropped it six or eight inches and kind of created a low point. Right. So I'm hoping. So we have to monitor right now to see what well, happens. We got some rain coming up in the next couple of days, I think. And there, right. and there should be a condition in the or conditions too. Uh, yeah, I think we can sure that that yeah, works. we can tie it into right. the next yeah. one. I think at this point, because the other one on the, on the enforcement order was a uh, replication, which the clock's almost out on that. But yeah. I, don't, I don't see an issue with. Uh, uh, is this does this complete the previous order that was on? Uh, on the property. The enforcement order originally, which is in here, was just to re replicate the wetlands, and then the only thing that was time related was really two growing seasons. So okay. the, the enforcement order was issued in 2017. So is that still on the deed? That uh, that order is. It would have to be closed out. Okay. Uh, we, we're in the second growing season right now, correct? Yes. On that? I believe so. I believe so yeah. Are we are we at the point where we think we can? It's going to pass. I'm not sure, it's quite there yet, is it? It needs a little. I think it needs a little bit more. But a little I think bit it's, more. I, Okay. Right. I don't think it's an issue because we just wouldn't close it out if it wasn't done. Right. Um, it might Good. be worth working like Ecotech or someone got to review it. So, so yeah. if we close, if we close the hearing tonight, we, the, the other the other enforcement order would still be open. Yeah, still, yeah. yeah. But the enforcement order, who's that one against? Property. Well, it goes property. against yeah, it's against the property. property. I mean, right. Right. they have So the we property. would uh, we own the property now. Yeah. yeah. So yes. we would yeah we would have to close that out, but we would. It's coming yeah. up fairly soon, isn't it? It's yeah, and it's still attached it's still to the, the deed, so it was not like it's it's going to go away just because it's right. transferring property. Transfer That's how we for another. Okay, so you are the owner yeah, we would, now. Yeah, so, we, okay, so they haven't yeah, heard about the property. <laughs> okay. Does anyone in the public have any questions or comments on this hearing? All right. Oh, I see your hand. So can you state your name and address, please? My name is Azad Chaparian, Eight High Ridge Road. Uh, I was here last month to express our concerns about what's happening on Lot 8. Um, we've been monitoring the situation for the last three or four years. Uh, the last time we went through this, all this remediation work was, was implemented, and it didn't appear to solve the problem of the drainage. I sent some videos and also some photos over to Mr. Truman. I hopefully he shared them with you. Yes, he did. And, you know, you had a chance to see what happens um, when we have heavy rain. Our concern also is what happens in the winter when the ground is frozen, and if that catch basin isn't catching everything, which it wasn't last year, it was flowing across the street, across the sidewalk, and freezing on the sidewalk and on the street. How do we, what assurance do we have that this situation is not going to continue? By lowering this drain by six or eight inches, how do we know that this is going to solve the problem? Particularly if you're going to cut uh, as you've indicated, clear-cutting most of the trees on that lot, causing additional drainage issues. Where is that water going to go? How do we know that this problem has been solved? We had assurances three years ago that this was going to be solved, and it wasn't. And I have video evidence, and I have photographic evidence that it wasn't. Yeah, I mean, we've, I mean that drain was definitely what was put in two years ago, I think, was set too high. Um, I'm going to say... We put in some riprap, that didn't work it, but when we went out on Friday, you could see it was it was catching probably half the water, two thirds of the water. But and right the now we're in the dry season, around. so what happens when the ground freezes and if we have heavy rain, they've cut all the trees down. Well, there's, there's two systems, so there's, there's the water that goes to the drain and then there's gonna be the water that's associated with this project, which goes to a separate drainage system, so. The drain that's there now, the beehive, you call it? Mm -hmm. Where does that drain into? It ties to the town system. So that's draining into the town system yeah. right now. So as long so as the any, water is physically so getting into it, it that's yeah. permissible to have all this water draining into the town system. Yeah, it's just it's just off of a private lot. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's no different than water draining off a driveway down into a, a catch basin drain. It's no different really. Again, we have some very serious concerns. The abutters are here. We have very serious concerns. 
about what's going to happen when that lot is cleared. And additionally, the other two lots are going to be cleared. One has been cleared. So there's going to be additional runoff and drainage going into that lot, and that is the low point on that street. So we're here to express our concerns that we do not feel the, the issue has been addressed. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Let me just say that we appreciate you coming here. I, we agree, uh, and it's been, and it's now your, your testimony has in fact been uh, caught and corroborated about the absence of uh, effectiveness of this drain as it existed before, as it's catchment area. But the engineering department now believes that this fix will, in fact, uh, address the problem. If it doesn't, there'll be a condition on this or new order of conditions that, uh, that will say that if it still overflows, it has to be addressed again. There are no guarantees. You ask for a guarantee. There, obviously, there are none. But the engineers currently believe that this is the solution to that issue. And uh, it has been implemented. Has the condition gotten worse, do you think, over, over the years since they put the drain in? Or has it, it ha improved somewhat, but it hasn't fully satisfied it? I mean, Are you directing the question to me? Yes, I am. Did you see the videos that I sent you? I saw, I saw the pictures of no. the drain catching a lot of silted water on the road. We brought the uh, condition to the attention of Mr. Yeah. Stone in 2017, May of yeah. 2017, and it continued to get worse. Yeah. It did not get better. During the summer, we had algae growing on the sidewalk. So you couldn't walk on the sidewalk if you wanted to because it was slippery. In the winter, it froze, not only on the sidewalk, but also on the street. So it was impassable. Yeah. So the condition was completely unacceptable. Yeah. And work has been done since then, though, out there. Just today. Yeah, well, I mean, the, the issue with the past, when you brought it to Mr. Stone's attention, that resulted in an, an enforcement order to rectify the problem. The, pro the issue was that the property owner at the time did not respond appropriately. Now there's a new property owner who is willing to respond and has responded today uh, to try to address the problem. So hopefully we can, uh, it will uh, in fact address the problem. Yeah, I'm just, um, just to clarify, Mary Noller, 14 High Ridge Road, we're, the, we're adjacent to this drain. Um, he did put a drain in. It's still, I mean, he took it out and it's lying there. Hmm. It's kind of like a manhole cover. And then um, we, I've been going in several seasons and talking to Brad. And then when Brad left, I met Andy. And Andy told them to put in this riffraff, that's the bigger stone, is that right? Yeah, originally all that was out there was just a catch basin. The first time I went out to the property, it was covered in leaves, okay. so it was clear the water was just going over the top. So my first solution was <clears throat> put the beehive in, and then while I was out there, they actually said, well, we'll put some, the stone around, the riffraff around it. But that's very recent. That's just happened in the last month or two, yeah. Yes. And the, it's, as I, I just refer to it as a mess, because it brings all this debris down the street, on, down the sidewalk. <laughs> it picks up sure. everything, you know, the weeds. The town actually mows it once or twice in the summer. Picks up any dried grass that's there. Um, it, it brings a, a lot of mud. And so it changes the sidewalk every time. I clean it up and I have to dig it out again several times, you know, no matter what the season, spring, summer, fall. Uh, and winter, it has been just flooding. It's just been icing. It's been awful. And, but mainly it comes down and it goes beyond the grass strip, and then it goes down our driveway approach and around the corner and into the uh, catch basin. What? Well, it's ruined the driveway. Yeah. yeah it's ruined it was the, definitely not functioning originally, this design. Our expectation so now is that this current this current action will address that issue. Yeah. If it okay. doesn't, if it doesn't, we'll I guess my call Andy. Would, will we get some yeah. time to yeah. observe this? We're going to get some hard rain in the next two months. Yeah. And, yeah. But you know, yeah. it's, it's happened. It's it's kind of a it's kind of a
kind of is like seasons, like a whole, you know, like yep. let's see what winter is. Mm -hmm. That's that would be helpful. I think that's the only way we're going to know. Sure. And then yeah. we know, you know, eventually it'll stop somehow. Yeah, and, the, and they say we'll be watching it as the house is being built, so we'll have a, a few. Oh, so something would. Go yeah, it's not. I mean, the order of conditions won't be closed out until everything is built and stabilized. So we're talking well, next spring probably. So we'll certainly have a good opportunity to monitor it and certainly the developer has been more than willing to tweak it as we've asked them to so, um, the, obviously the, the issue is it with it being natural is that the water tends to form its own path so we kind of playing a little bit of catching up of catching up where the water goes and then yeah. so but I'm I, I feel confident we'll be resolved before we close the sale all right any further questions regarding this here yes uh, Barbara Darcy 10 High Ridge Road and I'm going to butter up the wetland last month was the original manipulation of the wetland that resulted in the enforcement order. Um, there was vegetation there, there were large trees, and what they did to replace it was just planted grass. The grass has grown, and it's um, the wetland itself is wetter now than it was before it was manipulated. And I worry about the poor drainage, and also if the drainage from We've also, I mean, we've had a very wet spring this year, too. Right? This has been an unusually wet spring. But even the last few years, we've watched it, we've taken pictures. It's, mm -hmm. The water sits there for a long time. And so I worry about more water being directed in to, to drain into the wetland. It's not going to drain, and, you know, it's going to affect our property. That's my worry. All right, thank you. Any further questions or comments? Well, I have a question. So, so then, is there a buffer behind us before that? There, there are two driveways are going in, correct? The first one. Yeah, is there's actually right now three lots on development in that corner. All three, all three lots yeah. are in the development. And so. so we're talking about eight tonight, and then six, I believe, would be after us. It's ten, actually, isn't it? Eight, ten. Eight, ten. Yeah, eight, eight, and ten. So this is this is eight. Ten is basically the bottom of the page, and then twelve is the one that's right on the corner. That's okay. So coming towards us is yeah. Ten. So so you'll have so you'll still have, you know, a lot of the vegetated area where the wetland is between so you. So what? Yeah. Does that? Are there? Do some of the trees remain? It so all remains. Only John wants to point out whether yeah the edge um, of the clearing yeah. is, but there's a substantial. I mean, two thirds of the lot is staying. Yeah, obviously, this whole area that is wet, none of that is being disturbed. Um, we're going to have an erosion control barrier running along that. That'll, that'll kind of delim delineate the limit of work. And um, almost at about where the radius is, where, um, you know, that kind of odd dead end is at Northland. Um, just before that, that's where the driveway for 8 will go. And then beyond that is 10, and then... 12 is the one that's already in that they're cutting in kind of on, on the other side of the corner. So it's the reverse of the way I've been picturing it? Eight you're, you're here. next to us, the you're, first one? Picture. You're here. You're going, the catch basin is there. Beyond that catch basin where all the water is leaking out, you go beyond that, and then there's 8, then there's 10, and then there's 12. That's, oh, that's so there's, do we know how wide that is? The driveways are... Each driveway is about 12 feet wide. No, I mean the wetlands. wetland area. Oh, this wetland area? Um, this, the total length is about 119, so probably that's like 40 or 50 feet from your property line. It's just, the edge of the wetland is just beyond where that beehive inlet that they just put in. It's just beyond that going away from you. Yeah, it's about 80 feet this to the edge of the tree line. <coughs> so you basically have 80 feet. And oh, and, and here it it only widens out. Obviously, it widens out a little bit more. But 
Just another clarification. At the last sure. meeting, you told us essentially you were going to clear cut all of the timber and the trees up in the where the house is going to be located. Yes. So I just want to go on record. That's the area that's right now holding back the additional water going into that vent. <coughs> so the trees are 80 or 90 feet tall. The small amount of work that was done where the wetland is resulted in this amount of drainage. Now, if you're going to take all those trees out, we have very serious concerns. It's going to create a much bigger problem. That small drain is not going to resolve that issue. Well, if it just, doesn't, yeah. well, I mean, we are, just to, to be clear, we're capturing the, all the roof runoff. We're putting those into subsurface uh, recharge chambers. We're capturing the, uh, the driveway runoff and putting those in um, basically stone-lined trenches. So that'll capture some of that runoff. And we kept those shallows to stay above groundwater so that those can help additionally leach water into the ground. So we do have um, drainage structures and, and processes in place to um, kind of counteract the, the impact of, uh, you know, the additional impervious area. And obviously, they're, they're going to be landscaping, planting grass to, to stabilize everything, which will Correct. only, you know, help the situation and, and even off the, the treed condition as opposed to, a, a, you know, a developed condition with a house and a lawn. Mm -hmm. mentioned that um, the <coughs> runoff would be directed into the wetland area. Do you have any estimation sort of how much water it can accommodate or once it gets there, is it, will it drain down or is it just intended well, to go there and sit there until it, until the ground absorbs? You have to also realize there is um, 578, um, there's about an 18 foot Elevation it goes from about 560 up to 578 or almost 580. So it's about a 20 foot elevation difference from the front of the lot to the back of the lot. And a lot of this drains obviously down towards Northland. It, it has a positive drainage pattern. That's why it's running onto Northland Road and down to the catch basin. So that's why we're trying to capture it. So if it was a really flat site and you know you might have some fluctuation where there is quite a bit of gradient, that water is going to, you know, run down through the wetland and out towards Northland and into the drainage system as it does now. So I really wouldn't be too concerned about the elevation of the wetland expanding into your yards because, like I said, there is about a 20-foot elevation gradient difference from front to back. So you feel, and there is that grade now, though, and it's... Correct, and it's going to stay the there. same. But, but water still <coughs> sits there. So you're saying that you feel additional water going into that wetland Well, it's really, I mean, it's, it's the same water. Um, we're capturing, the, the, there's a difference between impervious area and woods, obviously. It's going to run off of the impervious area quicker. Um, so to counteract that influx of water, that's why we're putting in subsurface, trains we're grabbing all the roof runoff, putting that subsurface, um, trying to grab as much driveway, putting those into, into trenches of stone to kind of overcome that any inundation of water. But ultimately, it's the same water, and it's all going in the same direction down towards Northland Road. And through you, Mr. Chairman, this, this project was subject to the new stormwater bylaw. So whereas typically in the, in the past, single-family home wouldn't have to put this extensive drainage system in because of the new bylaw that we, we implemented this year, this actually has you know, a fairly substantial stormwater. So that they're not allowed to let the water leave any quicker than it did before the site was developed. So we, the engineering department has already reviewed all those calculations. That's why they have you know, the, under, the infiltration system and the trench drain. So all, all three of these lots have actually got a fairly substantial drain system compared to what you would see typically in the past for single family homes. I just have a quick question. You said that you're going to put a Can you give your name in it? <coughs> I mean, we're talking about going from 
a stripped lot, you know, like anybody, just having a lawn, planting grass, shrubs, you know, landscapes. There's nothing special about it. For the stormwater permit, we reviewed it for the stormwater permit. All right, last chance. Any other further questions or comments? I have a question. <laughs> have, have you had the discussion with the commission about delineated, delineating the wetland boundary um, for the, the future residents of, of the house so that they don't encroach on the wetland? Oh, yeah, like putting something for a line of shrubs or a fence or something? We're not opposed to it. Okay. Because in the past, as yeah. you know, there have been encroachment of, of lawn further into the wetland <clears throat> area. So it would be nice to have a physical barrier um, where <clears throat> people know they can't do any further yard improvement. Right. What, what would you suggest in terms of uh, along the wetland flags? Uh, By the house, Bob. No. Yeah. W8 to uh, WF8. Well, to 11? 8 to 11, because that's really the yard area. The rest is just mm -hmm. pretty driveway. much straight driveway. Right. Yeah. Okay. I think that would work. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, the, 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 the homeowner is actually here. He's on the back. So. Right. Ed's. Uh, do you like split rail fences? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Typical to split rail with the Aber body behind it. Sure. Yeah. Do that. Yeah. 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 But, sorry, Josh, well, uh, some other commissions have like a circular dial that people put on just fence posts that say, you know, what area you're doing, you're doing it for some of that. The person pulling the fence in. We'll have to look into that. Yeah, yeah we usually do the cards. Hard barrier, which is the fence, and that has a life, limited life. So then we hopefully will have everybody backing it up, and they usually get pretty mature by the time a cedar fence, split rail fence, is gone. Yes? If you were to issue an order of conditions, can we ask that some additional trees be placed to replace the ones that are being taken down? In our particular property, mm -hmm. we have not. This is our property. Here yep. We did not clear everything. This corner of our property, we put in large boulders that were dug up during excavation. We backfilled, and we planted about uh, 15 trees in here, which actually is acting in your favor because it prevents the runoff from going into this property. Uh, what we'd like to do is ask, if you do issue an order of conditions, that some kind of uh, material we planted in here relatively decent caliber yeah that's you know i'm just looking at the building uh, footprint and the available land around it you don't have a lot of free space between the drive and you have your subsurface drainage chambers can you see those they, they yeah they take up a good chunk but in that here, corner right along this line uh yeah right on the property right on the property line uh that would slow down the rate of flow and at least pull yeah. some of this water out. Right now it's showing uh, some trees there. Is so that all going to be coming down, according to what uh, it's called. That's a tree line. On it is side. a tree line. Now who's that? Is that yeah. from the adjacent property? The that's that's the proposed tree line on our side of the lot line. Right, to keep some buffer between. Keep a little bit of buffer. So, so you, were you proposing to plant something? Along? No, that was like the cut line. Yeah, the cut line. I mean, they, so whatever is remaining, that represents the remaining vegetation. Correct, exactly. There's nothing, There's nothing here. So yeah. This will all be gone. But you're talking scale-wise. Uh, I would say that's 25 feet from the house to the tree line. 25, 30 feet, John? Yeah, one inch so goes 20, 20 feet, so 30 feet. Well, 30 feet. 30 feet. I mean, the other thing we could do is, you know, when we go in to clear it, see if there's any trees that are worth saving. Yeah. We could figure that in the field. We're open to meeting them out there, too, when we're clearing it. To yeah, see. There might be some nice trees. I know there's not. I, I know there's not a heck of a lot of yard. It's kind of right. you yeah. yeah. Put the house well, maybe, in and you work around maybe the utilities. Maybe one thing to consider is, is extending this arbor vitae mm -hmm. line along the property I, line. If and, and you could do that. I mean that and that keeps it compact. Yeah. Or if there is some other, you know, other 
shrubs just so it doesn't if look like. If you're not like, clearing to the property line anyway, then you what? Yeah, you and they'll want to they'll want to fill in some gaps. Everybody wants their sure. privacy, oh, yeah, obviously. Yeah, so I, that's no, not objective to that on the perimeter, but I'm yeah. just saying there's not a lot of space to work with. Right. Uh, planting, you know, oak trees. Right. <laughs> right. 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 Okay. Yep. Thank you. All right. Seeing no further questions or comments, we're going to close the hearing. Thank you. Thanks, very much. everybody. Thank you. Thank you, board. It's an RDA. Uh, yes, it's an RDA. Meadowbrook. Is there a uh, note? No, no, should be in there somewhere. I hope it'll be in here somewhere. I did them. <laughs> well, let's How about on the front? There it is. Oh, there should be a bigger copy, too. Unless yeah. I didn't put them in. Can you find it? This one says 8 Meadowbrook. Wait a minute. That's right. That's it. 8 Meadowbrook, huh? Mm -hmm. Can you see it? All right, we have a, uh, a new hearing. Notice is hereby given in accordance with the provisions of General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40, that Christopher Pal Palomero, 8 Meadowbrook Circle, Shrewsbury, has filed a request for determination of applicability to expand an existing lawn and landscape area at 8 Meadowbrook Circle. Public meeting will be held on the above request at 7 p.m. on Tuesday evening, July 16th, in the Selectman's meeting room. Yep. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. Carl Hoffman, Planning Engineering. Here on behalf of Chris and Kate Palermo, uh, properties at Ed Meadowbrook Circle, we have a planning application uh, proposed lawn construction and landscaping within the riverfront area, and also partially within a BBW. So the area that we're looking at is this shaded area right here. Um, that area is equal to 324 square feet. Um, there was an order of conditions that was previously issued uh, for the development of this lot. The certificate, certificate of compliance was issued in November of last year. So we're back again um, seeking to do some additional work. There was a riverfront area that was associated with the lot development. Uh, that was 11,787. Um, we're allowed to go up to 12,129 square feet. So this is the remainder of that 10%. So um, 324 brings us up to that, um, that max area limit. And so, um, like I said, it's this area right here. Uh, we've got a line of steak waddles going around there. We're going to propose that to be installed by surveyors to make sure we get it right on where it's supposed to be. Carl, the numbers that you just uh, recited from the last filing, those are all the numbers presented to the commission. No right. changes to it, right? No recal. It's the numbers you presented last time. Yeah, so we just take what we took the difference. Time. That's the difference, exactly. Okay. So this. <coughs> last time uh, plus this time brings us up to the temperature. Okay. There's been no adjustment to that. Okay. Right. Anything, Martha? Um, I'm just trying to make out the plans. What is sure. what is this? That I mean, is a slope. That's so a oh, rip 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 yes. slope. Do you mind if I just point to the plan right here? So this is the area that we're looking at right yeah. now. It's that, that area right there. Okay. Not this extended? Correct. It's not that. That's already, that was part of the old um, application. So the idea is just to increase the lawn area exactly. a little bit. Yeah, I can show you, we have a picture actually of what it looks like. It's, um, Why is that shaded, Carl, this one here? Why that was previously proposed to be altered, but actually didn't really get too, too much altered. Um, 
So this picture is taken from a vantage point of about right here on the driveway, okay. looking in that direction. So the wall is right here, and you can see that it's kind of shrubby. Um, it's bittersweet. It's, it's bittersweet. It's um, multi-floor roofs, which are invasive. Mm -hmm. So by doing this work, we're actually sort of clearing that bit area and getting rid of some of those invasives. But it's going to be turf grass. It'll be turf grass. Okay. 300 something square feet. to improve the view? Um, yes, I'm not sure what they're doing, but that's, yeah. okay. that's what they're proposing. Okay. Anything and else? I don't, I don't think so. I mean, the slope looks okay for what they, mm. they want to do. It's good. Okay. Bob? I'm all set. Andy? I, don't, I have no questions. Does anyone in the public have any questions or comments on this hearing? All right, so then we'll close Mr. it. Uh, okay. uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I think motion is in order, right? Okay, first, yeah. I move that we issue a negative determination with regards to this request. We have second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. You're all set, Carl. Thanks for getting rid of the bittersweet. Yeah. Is a, uh, yeah, it's just a copy. I don't know why that. Yeah, I guess this is a new this habit. Is, right? It's a little yeah, chaotic upstairs yeah. right now. So. Uh, this, this should be for uh, 42 Lakeside Drive. Yep, this is, that's what it is. Okay, we have a new hearing. Notice is hereby given in accordance with the provisions of General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40, that Galen Keller. 42 Lakeside Drive, Shrewsbury, has filed a request for determination of applicability to install a new deck off an existing house at 42 Lakeside Drive. A public meeting will be held on the above request at 7 p.m. on Tuesday evening, July 16, 2019, in the Selectman's Meeting Room. Good evening. Good evening, sir. My name is Galen Keller. I live at 42 Lakeside Drive. I've owned that home for 17 years. In front of you, I hope you have some information. Just orienting you to where I live. The second page is just the street on which I live. I've highlighted the lot that I'm on. Just for your reference, the lot to my south. It's that small lot. It's actually owned by the town of Shrewsbury. The next empty lot is land that's not necessarily recognized owned by anybody. Probably. Behind it is Lake. Some people call that Round Lake, Round Pond, I should say. Some people call it Flint. Some people call it Lake Flint Sigmund. <clears throat> the third page is actually my plot plan from the mortgage. And the fourth page shows where I would like to place a deck in the back of my house. The house itself is anywhere where the deck would be is anywhere from 51 to 56 feet from the water. <clears throat> the deck itself would be there for 41 to 46 feet because I propose a 10 foot deck. <clears throat> I'd mentioned what color codes, but I'm color blind, so I don't know what I, <laughs> I use for colors. What's yeah. the size of the deck again, Gailene? A uh, 10 by 18. 18. It, it may have to be 19, depending on the requirements for the width of the stairs. Okay. And, and I know on your, uh, you said 50-something feet from the water to the edge of the deck? No, edge of the house. It, uh, to the house itself. Oh, to the house itself. Okay. So then take 10 feet off for right. the width of the deck, correct? 41 to 46 feet. And it's varied because, as you can see, the pond is not right. even. Right, exactly. Of course, that's a very steep slope. It is a slope, and I, I have a line there where the slope starts. Yes. Is that what that line is? Yeah, that's yes. What was my next it question. slopes down. Yeah. It's natural vegetation. There is no retaining wall, really. So, so the deck looks like it's 10 feet from that top of slope to as little as 3 feet at another end to the top of slope. Is that correct? correct? Yep. Now I'm putting the footing, not to confuse things, but 2 feet in. 
So the footing itself will be two feet further than you just referenced. Footings okay. will, won't be a poured footing. It'll be slurry. It'll be sauna tubes. And or the he helical piles. Helical, whatever is required by the town. Okay. Or a lot of people use helical piles now because they're yeah. easy. Oh, really? Cool. And they're less intrusive, too. Yeah. Yeah. All right. The house, the deck does not go the entire length of the house. The house itself is 23 feet, and then there's another four feet for the mudroom. But I wanted to keep, I didn't know exactly how far it should be from the water, but I wanted to keep it beyond the, on the flat portion of the rear of my house. Also, I wanted to be over 40 feet from the water itself. <coughs> now, in terms of the landscaping, there's no disturbance to the ground. None. So right, right, the right now, there's a, that flat section nearest the house mm -hmm. is basically stone, okay. crushed stone that was there. It's probably been, I don't know how long it's been there. I can't say. Longer than me. <coughs> The house now, was supposedly built in 1959. Now your fourth page here indicates that your deck is 16 feet wide, but uh, yes, it's 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 a rendering. I realize yeah. that. But I, what you're really telling us is the total pl uh, the deck and the stairs is 20 feet wide. Correct. Now the stairs may have to be 30 some. I'm not sure yeah. exactly okay. what. Okay. So it's fine. roughly that's what it is. That's fine. But it's still going to be 16 feet. Of the house. It's not going to be 23 feet of the house. Oh, I see. All right. See what I'm saying? Yep. Okay. I need that extension to be able to step down to yep. the front, that side yard, and also down to what I call a patio area where that crushed stone is. Okay. But I didn't want to, well, like I said, get anywhere near of 40 feet from the water. So I only kept it 16 feet versus, ideally, I'd like to go 23 feet. But I didn't right. want to cause any... Yeah, Disruption. Martha? I don't. No comment for me. Uh, Andy. No, I just think it's pretty straightforward. Does anyone in the public have any questions or comments on this hearing? Okay. Mr. Chairman, I would move that we issue a negative determination with regard uh, with regard to this petition. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Negative. Okay, Negative's good. Negative. Yes, it's counterintuitive. Negative's good. Thank you. Negative's good. Thank you. You're welcome. People. Have a good day. Thank you. Notice is hereby given in accordance with the provisions of General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40, that Bill Garcia, 16 East Avenue, Shrewsbury, has filed an abbreviated Notice of Resource Area Delineation for Resource Area at 248 Spring Street, Shrewsbury, Mass. Public hearing will be held on the above notice at 7 p.m. on Tuesday evening, July 16, 2019, in the Selectman's Meeting Room. Uh, do we have anyone? Outside. Are you the van red? Right. <laughs> Have you seen this? Have you checked what I am but I would recommend there's no way that no, I would rec recommend we have eco tech or someone look at it because it's not really my sorry, recommend what? Eco tech or someone? Yeah. It's not really my forte is well in delineation. Okay. Unless the commission wants to go out and take a look at it. Because we don't have an order we don't have an NOI number for it anyway, so yeah. we would have to continue. Oh that's right. Okay. <clears throat> We've read the notice, John, so. Thank you. Go to it. There's too many people trying to conduct business out in the hallway. Cards? Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Do you have a number yet, John? Um, you know what? I just got an email. Um, I just got an email today uh, where they had issued a number. Um, because I had looked, obviously, on the I, agenda, Yeah, I checked the website today, and there was no number four. <laughs> I can so. check in my emails on That's my right. phone. It's gonna... they, they did issue one. I just got it. All right. Uh, so this lot, I'll put up the plan, is uh, located on Spring Street. Um, it is right across from um, High Street. 
So right, if you're coming up from Ward Hill, um, right by Marston's, you go kind of around that hairpin turn, and then uh, just before you would uh, hit High Street, this lot is located, and actually the Marston's, they own this lot right here, and then that's where the tight bend is. This lot is right adjacent to uh, one of Marston's lots and kind of a diagonally across from High Street. Um, there is a, there's a house that Steve Turnbloom built uh, probably, I don't know, 10 years ago now that had um, a little bit of a wetland in its side yard. There's a culvert pipe um, that discharges water from that. It's, it's tiny. It's just in their little side yard. That discharges some water um, across Spring Street. And then there's another pipe um, on the other side of High Street that discharges some water down in this direction. Um, so that's kind of the headwaters of, of where this wetland starts. It flows in a southerly direction. Um, the balance of the lot slopes in a south-southeasterly direction. And along this line, you can see where it just starts. The soils out there aren't that great, and it just starts bleeding out. And that's really what um, there's kind of a defined channel on the easterly side where these drain lines discharge. And then along the westerly side of the lot, it just it starts to flatten out and it just starts to bleed out of the hill. And that's really what, what sets this line. So we have that flagged by uh, Matthew Morrow, who uh, he was out there a month or so ago. Um, and I was out there on July. When did he do it? No, it was in May. Jeez, time goes by. Um, I was out there with him in May uh, when he did flag this. Um, and there is quite a bit of a transition once you get from the wetland to the upland. Um, it's fairly well defined. Um, I'm not an expert as much as Matt. He did provide all the field data forms showing um, how he delineated what his findings were for soils and, and, and uh, vegetation. Who's he whatnot. affiliated with, John? Is he, uh, uh, in the Matt family? is out of the um, Fitchburg, Lancaster area. Actually, he's the wetland. Um, he's the agent, I think, in Lancaster, Lunenburg. Um, he's he's an agent for a handful. I know he's the agent in Sterling as well. There's a handful of towns up in that area. What kind of agent? I mean, for agent. He's, for a, he's the, the, the um, conservation agent. A conservation, so conservation con, con. agent. Okay. In like a handful of towns up in that area. Okay. Um, very good guy, good to work with, very knowledgeable. Um, I've been working with him on a number of projects over the past, you know, three, four, five years. Um, so he, he's, he's well respected, and like I said, he's, he's a conservation agent in a handful of towns up, up north of here. Okay. Um, so that's, we just wanted to make sure that we had uh, the wetland properly delineated before um, this lot is under contract. Uh, they don't know what they're looking to build yet. Um, but we want to make sure that we have the wetland line um, <coughs> properly delineated before we move forward with anything. Okay. And when you said, John, <coughs> the way you delineated the wetland, it, it broke out, basically, the water was breaking out of the side slope. It's not much of a slope, is it? Uh, no. no. But it's, it's that defined that it's yeah. breaking right yeah. out. Yeah, you can see there's a, a not a well-defined breaking slope, but you can see where where the, both vegetation and and just there is a, there is a little bit of a break in there. Um, I, I don't claim to be a wetland expert, but um, it made sense when I was out there, and he was showing me how how he was making the break. Okay. Anything, Martha? I I. No, uh, I just out of curiosity, did he do? Did he look at soils as well as vegetation? He did, and he. Um, I made sure that he did um, produce the the field data forms, and those were submitted with this as well as to uh, as well as to DEP. Thanks, John. Bob. I would just say, in Brad's absence, we should refer this up to. Do we, we have yeah. to uh, sure. confirm yeah. the, this delineation? Okay. Yeah. Anything else, Andy? No, I just say it would be my recommendation to have yeah. someone look at it with the commission if don't have time. Does anyone in the public have any questions or comments on this hearing tonight? We will be continuing it to uh, 
field check the wetland line also in here. We get that at our next meeting. Yes, ma'am. Yes, I'm, I'm uh, Susan Cromlin. I'm a resident on Hill Street, and I'm also the listing agent of this property. So I feel out of duty and obligation I should be here. So I, I prior to listing the property, I had my maps, and I went up to the engineering department. And they said that we were far enough from the stream. They saw no need for it not to be buildable. So just to back up, I just wrote a couple of dates real quick before coming. So the Pat Woods own this property. They have bought from Greenleaf Farms. It was initially a three buildable lot locate area that they have purchased. But they live at two, so the Pat Woods used to live at 246 Spring Street. And this is 248 Spring Street. They live uh, here. This is the, this is the corner lot to, before Greenleaf. Is that correct? This is the, the lot adjacent. That's where they used to live. And that's the corner lot on Spring and, and Greenleaf. Correct. correct. Yeah. So what happened was when they they made their house, they, they turned their house, and so the now the three lot became a two lot. So they went through the engineering department. They went through all the you know all the the, the hoops to make sure that they could have a buildable lot next to them. So in 2011, they sold. So then, you know, the, the Murthys own that property now. And um, I can't help but think, so I went to the engineering department prior to listing the property. Then I get a more serious, a serious buyer, has you know, some plans in mind, and again, went up to the engineering department, but, no reason why, you know, shouldn't be a buildable lot, that kind of thing. So this really catches me by surprise because even in the public record, the pet ones have owned this land. They had intentions of their daughter building on it, which she decided not to, not to, you know. Um, she lives out of state. But it, it catches me by surprise because um, they've been paying as a residential, developable piece of land for the last 20 years. It's currently assessed at 255, well, exact, I'm taking notes, uh, 254,400. And their taxes is estimated at, so they've been paying $3,200 on a developer piece of land that their daughter almost built on, but now we find that now there's an issue. One more date I just wanted to share with you. In 2013, the house across the street was built. Um, the house is 6 High Street, so that's the corner of High and Spring. And I noticed that, and I've walked that land a couple of times, and um, you might want to have looked at, so the patent ones are gone, so nobody's police in the area, but it appears that either the culvert was moved or enlarged, or there's actually, I don't know what you call it, um, there's actually a ditch from 6 High Street, a ditch, and the culvert goes under Spring Street onto this piece of land. So, <coughs> Don't misunderstand. I just thought it was very important for you to know some of the more detailed facts because. Don't, don't misunderstand this process. This process does, is not to imply that this land is not buildable. This process is to establish conditions under which you can, or limitations under which you might be able to put a house here. So uh, the existence of a wetland on the property uh, establishes certain criteria uh, that uh, the builder has to meet, but it doesn't mean that it's not buildable. So, and that's what we're trying to work out here. Right, and that was just important that, that I could okay. share with you some of the information because I'm, I'm very yep. surprised at the findings. Well, and then you don't do this process until you're ready to do something with the property. So there would be nothing driving this process to have happened earlier. It's now at the point where they do want to develop it, and <coughs> this is the first step. Right. Okay. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. you. Any other questions or comments tonight? We're going to be hearing this again next month. I don't see any, so we'll continue the hearing till August 20th, John. Okay, and I'll coordinate with, with you any um, Yeah. Yeah, I'll, talk to, I'll have come up with reach out to you, go tech, and have them. Okay. Just walk it for us. If I might ask your indulgence, Mr. Chairman. 
Yep. I'm Mark Donahue. I represent Route 20 Nominee Trust, uh, the last item on your agenda. Yes. Um, because of the magnitude of the project, we expect there'll be multiple hearings with regard Correct. to this. And we'd like to have a full board to start. So I'm going to be asking for continuance, and if we okay. can that's take care of that now so I don't have to watch the next two hearings. I that, appreciate the that's, that's fine. You're not having fun, Mark? <laughs> I enjoy it, but being home watching on TV is even better. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Very good. We'll make that we'll make that notice uh, when we get to it on the agenda item. Okay. Okay. You want to knock it over to the September meeting because we're going to be doing civil to the planning board next month. So, okay. effectively, it might be the most well, appropriate use of time. We typically continue in meeting Good to meeting, time. but that's fine. Yeah, and just call in if you're not going to be there, and yeah. we'll continue it again. Thanks okay. so much. Okay. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Yeah, we can talk about that. So, yeah. All right. <clears throat> Which one's this book? This is the, wait a minute, that goes with that. That was the And we're looking for 40 Julio Drive. Julio Drive. <clears throat> Here we go. So this is continued. No, this is a new one. Let's continue, yep. Yeah. <clears throat> I presume it's here, right there. Okay, we have another <coughs> new hearing. Notice is hereby given in accordance with the provisions of General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40, at Shrewsbury Nursing and Rehabil Rehabilitation Center, 40 Julio Drive, Shrewsbury, has filed a notice of intent for the construction of a parking lot at 40 Julio Drive, Shrewsbury, Mass. A public hearing will be held on the above notice at 7 p.m. on Tuesday evening, July 16, 2019, in the Southman's meeting room. I'd like to stick him in there for a long time. Um, you guys have seen this plan before. Uh, the applicant's proposing to construct a 36 space parking lot in the existing lot area. Uh, this is Julio Drive. This is the existing Shipping Nursing Rehab building. This is uh, the lawn right now. There's a, a BBW and an intermittent stream here in the purple. Uh, that stream discharges to a head wall, which is then piped into Julio Drive and then goes down Julia Drive in a westerly direction. Um, so this, this project was permitted back in 2013. The order expired. Uh, the applicant never did the work. They're seeking to re-permit the project um, with some minor revisions that are outside the buffer. Um, but just to give you a, a little refresher, um, this red line here represents the buffer zone. So about two thirds of the parking lot is within the buffer. The site slopes away from the BBW. So the BBW is actually higher than our parking lot. Um, this is essentially like a, like a, a hand dug channel that just intercepts runoff coming up the, the upgrading areas. Um, we've got some temporary disruption proposed in the BBW just, um, so as part of the work we're taking out, <coughs> excuse me, taking out the head wall and replacing it with a drop inlet and then relaying a section of drain from here to here in order to accommodate the grades in the parking lot. So there's some temporary disruption of the BW and uh, stream uh, bank, but it's going to get restored to the existing conditions once the, the installation is in. So we're, we're taking the head wall out, um, and then we're putting the drop inlet in just on the upland side, so we're actually not uh, losing any BBW or, or stream channel. And Carl, it's yep. crossing the parking lot, and where is it tying into an existing drain? Yep, that, so that head wall's right here, yep. and that's where our drop inlet's going to go, and then the drain is this gray line right here. And it goes down, there's an existing manhole in Julia Drive right there. And then it goes to the public that way. To the public storm system. Correct. Okay. Is there any drainage in the parking lot? There is. Um, there's a catch basin closed in the corner here. That catch basin goes into the uh, underground infiltration area, which then discharges to another manhole in Julia okay. Drive. So as part of the site plan application and uh, this previous permitting, grades engineering review, all this stuff uh, back in 2013, it's the same stormwater management standard. So it's it's been reviewed before, um, and we've got in the area of where our parking lot sort of comes near the BBW. Again, the parking lot's actually lower uh, than the BBW. We've got some red osier dogwood and sweet pepper bush, keeping junipers, and red oak trees 
planted. So sort of just to sort of uh, reestablish the uh, reestablish the habitat area. So it's this lawn now. I'm going to put some some bushes and some trees in to sort of uh, create a buffer between the parking lot and the BBW. Uh, we've got hay bales and silt fence proposed on the low side of the work. We've got a line of um, silt fence proposed on the upland side. Again, the BBW is higher, but the silt fence is there just in case. Uh, crushed stone proposed at the entrance for like a tracking pad. I think that's about it. This, the changes from the 2013 plan that we're proposing, um, again, they're outside the buffer, but just so you guys know, uh, there was some work over here for accessible parking that's no longer being done. Uh, we're going to reconstruct the, that area, but that's not being done anymore. So the existing pavement's going to remain there the way it is right now. We've got one accessible parking space being proposed here. It's really just striping in the parking lot. Um, ways are, are going to stay the same. And then there's a walkway that had previously been proposed to go to the building here. It's now being rerouted to the existing uh, door over there. So those are the changes. And in terms of the protective measures, Carl, uh, yep. They're all the same that you proposed, so you haven't reworked that. Correct. It's all the same. Yep. The only thing is now we have the drain coming across the parking lot. That's always been there. Yep. So this this drain configuration here yeah, yeah. Had, had been like that previously as well. Okay, uh, with the original filing you're saying. Yep. That was a Yeah, so okay. everything that's changing is um, from this parking space outward. Okay. Yep. Well, not only, I, now I'm confused. Not only was that line in the original plan, but it, it's existing now, right? There's an existing yeah. line there now, correct. Okay. And we're, um, so what it is, is our parking lot comes in, and we need to cut the grades here. And so in order to cut the grades, we need to lower that line, oh, okay. which is why we're putting that drop inlet in, so right. we can get a little extra elevation difference, um, so that when a car drives in here, it's not driving on top of the yep. pipe. So okay. we got adequate cover going under the, under the parking lot. Yep. Martha? I have no questions. Bob, well, sir. Andy. No, I guess just technically we should close out the old order. So that's yes. So we'll do that. Um, we'll submit a request for that for yep. next, the next we'll meeting because well. we don't have a DEP for the number for this one. I do so. have one. Oh, you got one? All right, because I, I do. check this afternoon. We didn't yep. have one. They have, uh, they have one comment. Um, they asked that we, on our form, we listed uh, zero permanent disruption with some temporary disruption. They wanted us to quantify the temporary disruption. So um, the guy at just asked that we submit an updated form outlining uh, the specific description of temporary disruption, about eight uh, linear feet of bank temporary disruption. Okay. So then it would just be a matter of closing out the old one just so it's not hanging there on the... Yep. Uh, and you're okay with closing this hearing? Yeah. Because we'll, we'll, we'll just we'll do the specific compliance in the yep. next meeting. Okay. Does anyone in the public have any questions or <clears throat> comments on this hearing? Seeing none, we'll close it. All right, we have a new hearing. Notice is hereby given in accordance with the provisions of General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40, that Whitney Street Home Builder LLC, 1 Golden Court, Westboro, Mass., has filed a notice of intent for the construction of a single family home and associated site work at 89 Colonial Drive, Shrewsbury, Mass. Public hearing will be held on the above notice at 7 p.m. on Tuesday evening, July 16th. 2019 in the Selectman's meeting room. Good evening. Good evening. Now ready. <laughs> Thank you, Andy. Much yeah, time to no see. By the way, that's a receipt to show that we did file with DEP and we have yet to get unless okay. Andrew has gotten. I didn't check like today. I didn't see one now. You did check today. Yeah, I did. I check usually just before the meeting, just in case.
Go ahead, Aiden. For the record, Andrew Liston, Thompson Liston Associates. James Anacasa again. James Anacasa, proponent of the uh, Whitney Street Home Builders LLC. And the proposal is for the construction of a single family home at the very end of Colonial Drive. Uh, right of Lane is, is in this area. And this is Colonial Drive down at the bottom of the hill, the house where my brother used to live, and uh, just past the pump house. And the pavement ends right about here. And the proposal is to put a single house on this uh, parcel that is uh, just under two acres. The end of Colonial Drive is at this point. This is a right of way that goes to what had been a private proposal some years ago on a, the deep, deep slope going into Northboro. And this lot is the last Toledo lot that is available in this area as far as I'm aware. It has on it water flow from the bridal path subdivision through an existing storm detention basin through an outlet discharging into the brook and otherwise flowing down to Interstate 290. There's a BBW associated with it. The flagging was done by um, uh, Bob Merrill, Matt, Matt Merrill, and you have his report in the notice of intent. <coughs> Discussions have been relative to taking care of stormwater as well, and so besides the normal leaching pits on the roof drains discharging to ground, there's also going to be stone trenches on both sides of the driveway, which are defined on the plan. There is uh, nothing else particularly different or strange about the proposal. It will be close work in here. We have shown fencing along this edge. We will work in the people out of the, the wetland area. Um, there is an easement in this area so that's why the house is, is over in that area, other than that's the only place where we could did it otherwise. Andrew, how much uh, elevation are you losing coming down your drive, your proposed drive from where the existing stormwater detention is? Is that around five? 586. You're talking about from this area, John? Yeah, from uh, 586 down to the road to Colonial Drive. Down the road, which is 582. Two, so three. it's not not all that much of a... No. No. No, we were just... We had a similar type thing where they were using stone uh, trenches along the edge of the driveway, and we had uh, cutouts every... Instead of one continuous trench all the way down, we broke it, segmented it, so you had sections where it... We call it hockey sticking it into, like the wetland, yeah. toward the wetland. Hey, James. Well, we could, yeah. we could do that easily. Yeah. Yeah. Just to, to mention that to James too, too, when they were designing it. But obviously, we had that with a yeah. another property. Just I'm James tonight, by the way. Yeah, I know. <laughs> the uh, what? Tell me a little bit about the existing stormwater detention. That's that's a for a. You have to get hold of Franny and find out when this whole area is that, I think it's part of the original subdivision. Part of the original subdivision? I think some of it's part so of So that's, that's within that easement and yeah. uh, okay. And it's right now only got about you know this much water in it. Okay. So he must own that lot at one time, fenced. right? Still right. does. He must have owned this lot at one time. Toledo? Yeah. Yeah, he owns it now. He still does. Oh, he still it. does. Okay. From selling yeah. it. All right. And, and this Detention area is fenced already. Okay. Yeah. Although if you try and get to it today, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> it is wicked thick. <laughs> yeah, it is. And I'll have to maintain that. Martha, do you have any questions on this? Um, no, I, I don't. 
You see anything else, Bob? That well, I just want to. We we'll probably uh, we'll probably have to hire someone to check out this delineation as well, right? Uh, well, this isn't an ANRAD, so I don't. Want it to, I mean, in the wise, it doesn't matter so much because it's just. That's something to the commission. We want to make sure that it's properly delineated, right? And Brad's not around to walk it. Mm -hmm. We at least should walk yeah. it. Okay, if you want to walk, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. We, yeah. So we don't have a number anyway, so. Yeah. yeah. No, I think uh, we, can, we should have someone walk it. I, I can have a eco tech do okay. that for us. That's yeah. not fine. It, it, it looks like Andrew's uh, road <coughs> uh, drive again coming down by the existing stormwater detention. You were able to keep it out of out of the BVW, correct? Is that yes, it's out of the BVW, uh, and the set barrier is outside the BVW. Tight, but outside. Yeah, tight, but you did keep it out, so. Yeah, yeah and in terms of plowing, Andrew, when they come down and, you know, went to maintenance on that, what would keep them from just pushing the stuff all through into the wetland and, uh, any? That's a good condition for an order conditions. But yeah, just a the little. The intention would be they'd probably plow straight here. You would think they would, yeah. And they would kick off here and it's plow It's not going to be a lot there. of road salt and stuff yeah. anyway. It's a dead end street for now yeah. anyway, yeah. so. They're not, they're not salting the driveway. No, it would be just, you know, if they go in with trucks, they come and they pull out and they can plow up your stuff. It's very tight. <coughs> Anything else, Bob? Did you see? No. No. Uh, and, yeah. uh, no. The only thing is, I'm assuming this is over 5,000 square feet, so you'll need a stormwater permit yes. for engineering. Yep. That's been. I believe uh, he has the plan. We just barely got the signature to be able to file that. All right. So we'll look at the strange a little bit closely too. When yeah. we're okay. At that. Um, and then just as a point of interest, there is actually another lot, 115R, goes off the end of there. Oh yeah. Where's that? Right. 115R, it's a lot that's way in the back. They technically have an easement at right, but I don't know how they're going to get across the wetland, but it's, there okay. is technically another lot out there. Huh. It's, I believe there is, but <laughs> it would there's be hard also to get an to easement to... Yeah, there's an easement that comes all the way down the road. Yeah, it's, <laughs> not, I don't know how they're going to do it, but... We had but. actually designed a roadway that went all the way around there, and uh, it was a piece there of... There is work. a building permit in yeah. for it, but it's kind of... Some of limbo. <laughs> Does anyone in the public have any questions or comments on this hearing tonight? It's going to be continued till next month, so we'll have another chance at it. Okay, I don't see any, so we'll continue it until our next meeting, August 20th. Okay. Can you walk it? Do you need someone to walk with it? Uh, you know who's I will reach out. I'll probably reach out to Egotech. And have them. Yes. Yes. Underwear, yep. yep. chaps, leather jacket. I'm sure they know. Yep. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Andrew. Thank you. <clears throat> <clears throat> Okay, and uh, the last one is Ben Continue. Well, I mean, why don't I open it and then we'll continue? Yeah, that's for the uh, so I'll market read it. basket. Where's the notice, Bob? Yeah, oh, the notice. oh, yeah, I think you can call it help them. Should be uh, one eighty two hundred two twenty eight half a turnpike. Oh, down here. Oh, there it there is. It is. It. Okay. Okay. We have a new uh, hearing. Notice is hereby given in accordance with the provisions of General Laws, Chapter one thirty one, Section forty, that Kelly Rialdo, Trustee Route twenty nominee trust. 55 Cambridge Parkway, Suite 200, Cambridge, Mass., has filed a notice of intent for work associated with the proposed Edgemere Crossing at Flint Pond at 180, 200, and 228 Hartford Turnpike, Shrewsbury, Mass.
public hearing will be held on the above notice at 7 p.m. on Tuesday evening, July 16, 2019, in the Selectman's meeting room. Uh, tonight, the applicant was here, and he requested a continuation uh, so that he can make his presentation to the full Conservation Commission. We are down oh. two members tonight. Terrific, Andrew. So we will continue this hearing until our next meeting, which is August 20th. All right. Uh -huh. Meetings and hearings are done. Why don't we jump right into yeah. uh, enforcement? I think we got some people out here. Yeah. Uh, 12 Commerce Road. Uh, any update on that? Andy? No, I think, you know, um, they were in last time just saying that they are working on it, so I don't know when they're planning on filing, but... Uh, and I think John's gone. John was, uh, yeah, he, he gave us a quick sketch of what they're thinking, but nothing formal yet. Okay. 784 Grafton Street. 784 Grafton Street. They were, again, we, yeah. obviously, we walked it with them. They're in the middle of processing a notice of intent to react to the enforcement order. They said it'd probably be this month or next month they'd be filing. Okay. okay. 198 South Quinsigamon Ave. You want to come up? Just come up to the desk, please. I know that I talked to Andy that the waiting for a notice of intent from the landowner for that property for August, I think you had said. And the question I had for you was that when Brad was here, he had already asked for that in for April. I think it was April 26 he was looking for it. Now, is this a revised one? And I didn't see anything in writing for the April. No, it's still the same. There's still, the force mode is still standing. They just never, they never reacted to it. So. To the April? Yeah, to the April one. Okay, so it's still the same enforcement order that's been on in effect all the time. They just didn't. They didn't act on it. They didn't come to any hearings, and then we finally, you know, met with them. So. So what do you do in the case if August comes and goes and they don't act on it? We call them up and ask them where it is. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then from there we just kind of wait and see. What At least we got it all flagged, so yeah, we're on our way. I mean, the only the only follow up with that would be to get DEP involved, but that's. Probably at this point, uh, you know, they seem to be a little slow, but they're intent, so, so they're moving in the right direction. But he's not building. At least the building has stopped on right. that shed. Right, because so. so. right, I know you've got some rain <coughs> in the wetlands. You know, so that there might be need for a buffer, or like you said tonight, a fence of some sort to delineate yep. between the wetlands and where they are. I know yeah. when you walk yeah. And that will all come with the notice of intent. That's when we would comment on those kind of conditions. Okay. Thank yep. you. Okay. Want to come on up? Okay. So where do we stand uh, on the lot right now? Yeah. Right now, I actually matter of fact, this afternoon I meet up with my uh, my architect. Mm -hmm. What we're trying to do is I got the engineer. The engineer is Bob O'Neill. Okay. So the last meeting we had, he, he did provide a plan, but uh, I think it was not good enough uh, for you guys. So now, in order to, to do the plan, I want to see if he's going to apply. We're going to apply. Maybe we should throw that for the next meeting. We're going to try to do the retain wall before you do any plan because it makes no sense to us to spend all the money to you know cover the bank, and later we might have to go close that with equipment. To move the wall is already half on the water. As soon as I bought the property, the wall has already been half away in the water there. So, if you guys want to try to hold that up for us to the next meeting, maybe I can have Bob here, the engineer, yeah, and, and explain. Right. You know, he probably yeah. is going to have a you know a big draw and explain what the plant's going to be, <coughs> what kind of trees are going to plant. Right. But I just can't do the plant well, without if you're do the wall. Yeah, I mean, without I having my wall built. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's technically there's two enforcement orders on there right now. One is for the tree cutting. Yeah. The other one is there was sand and like an artificial beach yeah. created right next to the right. wetland, which is already starting to erode yeah. into the pond. So we had asked that some saltation fence be put in there. Uh, it looks like there was some grading done around the stairs. So there's, there's two outstanding enforcements. Not. Have they put in the silt fence? I, uh, Kenny swung by the other day and sent me a photograph now. And yeah. you can see the silt, the sand is starting to wash into the lake right now. And you, get, you know, you got to get some kind of a fence in there to keep that sand from now moving into the lake. That's a problem. But then you, you should be able to do that yeah, right away. I yeah. can do that. And all work has stopped, right? No, I'm not working there. Yeah. yeah. I'm not doing any work there. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I would right. say there was a, a patio, may or may not be 100 feet, we don't know, but yeah. there's a patio that was putting it. The top. only thing I did over there, actually, I, I think I talked to you on the phone right after you, I think you dropped a letter on my mail and I call you. Uh, the only work I did there on the side of my house, there's a slider door there. It's been there, you know, uh, for many years, so. By where my slider door sit, I'm about 80 feet away from the water, and I'm off the bank because when you go into my driveway, my land is very level. Mm -hmm. Until you get a certain point, you have this slope. So what I did is actually I was traveling with my wife and uh, some of the, my employee knew I have uh, some sort of furniture. I bought a very expensive before I sold my house to move over here. It was a $6,000 furniture, outside furniture. And so they did this. They kind of surprised me. They, I have the furniture on the storage. So they went out, you know, with a couple, you know, load of uh, crashes thrown three quarter and they put a two by four around it, three and a half inch, and just spread it out so I can, they can put my stuff outside. We actually, they did without, I never told them to do yeah, it. They did. And I don't think there's, a, to me, I don't think there's even close to the water. There's nothing from there is gonna go in the water. You guys more more you're welcome to take a look there. And I don't think I need a permit for that. I, yeah. If I do, anything I was not digging anything, you know what I mean? It's not yeah. instruction. Yeah. Well, and I'm like within, 80 feet away from the anything water. Anything within 100 feet. Yeah. Any, yeah. any land disturbance within 100 feet. By that way, I said once that again, I apologize. Oh, no. because but, I but didn't show that them on your plan. It. I mean, it sounds like it's on the level part. I mean, they oh, yeah, did it, it without is. your knowledge. Yeah. Uh, and, and you understand what he's saying about the sand, right? You understand. That's the part you we want. You've got to put a silt yeah. fence there to stop that sand from eroding. Yeah. The water. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No yeah, problem. you got you to capture. You might even have to come out into the water a bit with it, right, Andy? To well, I think if you, I mean, you could put it on the wall, but there's, there's I mean, I, I see Kenny sent a picture this, this afternoon. It's just one corner. It's, you can see the sand in the lake. It's, it's already starting, yeah, to, it's starting to wash down, so yeah. we need to stop that. So I just got one quick question. So if my engineer and my architect provide all the paperwork the next meter, right, so do you think it's going to be possible to try to get approval, you know, uh, on the end of, you know, the, the season when the water drops so we can... Do the retaining wall, or uh, well, it's possible if there if everything is in order and everything is properly done. But yeah, they need and if it gets in in time. Actually, they've right. been working for months. Yeah. Actually, you know, yeah. 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 only if I get away and I cut the trees right after there. I cut the trees after you know I haven't done the right paperwork. You know, they've been working since then to get their approval. But the slope is very hard to and they have to get it in to come up with something. You know, to yeah. hold I mean, the, the deadline bank. is like the first week of August. So if it's not in by then. Then you'll be it's in gotta, September. You need like two weeks in advance of the meeting to have all the information in. Can they do just continuous day or do you have to do go the same process, you know, notify okay. about a list and all that? Yeah, it's a full blown notice of intent. Oh, so they make a filing. Just like you you sat I through me, a lot of those tonight. That, I thought he told me you just gotta you don't have to go through that. We just kinda apply because you already got a plan on this, you know, the first one. But whatever it is, I can talk to him. Have you? It's got to be in by August one to make the August. I mean, I guess. Oh, what was you? I'd have to let's see what the original order was for. Was yeah. it just for? Yeah, Brad has you know. Brad is that just for the tree cutting, it. or was it? It was. It was a full plan. You know, show I mean, all maybe the Maybe I'd plan. modify that one. But yeah, it's still, it's still the same deadline. on the front. Yeah. yeah. I think you guys have that on the file. Yeah. They they file that paperwork. Why so we, we could do an amendment. I'd, I'd have to pull in to see what was well, permitted. Have the engineer talk to. Yeah, Andrew. I'm, I'm just call. thinking that if it's, he could amend it if it's, but it's still, essentially he, he the same. He needs to put out the notice. Even it still needs to be, yeah. With, even so an amendment yeah. is basically still a full blown notice of intent. Yeah. Still yeah, notification. Yeah, you still have to notify the abutters on an amendment plan too. Okay. Yeah. But I think you just don't have the filing fees and all, right? Is that correct? Mm, I don't believe no. Yeah, I think that's the not for an amendment. Image. So but if you do have to go to the September meeting, you know, if for some reason. Is still possible to get trying to get the, the retaining wall permit before the before the drawdown jump down. to the next year, so I have no plan. Before I have the no draw retaining down, you mean? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you could because yeah, yeah the water is going to. Yeah, you want to do it in, in the drawdown. You're in control of the schedule. Yeah, yeah. You're you're right. in control. You All get right. your stuff in. Okay. You know, All right. Two weeks yeah, later, we have the hearing. And yeah, because they usually issue the order conditions within the next week yeah. after the hearing, so it's uh, okay. Yeah. All right. Any question? No. Okay. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Just let me know when you put that erosion in. We'll take care in so of the sand, right? Yeah, yeah. Just so I can take a look. 
All right, and the last. And then we had another one. The last one is uh, 203. Uh, yeah, there's some pictures. How do you have This picture. is something new. Yeah, Kenny sent me this this morning. Okay. So, I don't this is two. This one. No, it's a new one. It came in this morning, so it was Just after the agenda had already been published. Well, attention. Ken caught it, and uh, someone else on the lake also. This is 203 North Consignment Ave. It looks like there's a retaining wall That's going huge. in. Look at the amount of sure work does. that's been done. So. so uh, we probably should put out an enforcement order. Yes. I'll issue we'll one cease tomorrow. And yep. you know, it looks like the entire slope's been disturbed. Looks like two retaining walls, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah, I can't tell so. if the second one is a new one or, not, or an old one. It looks yeah. like there's a segmental wall, and then the one behind it was poured in place, which I, yeah. I have to guess is probably original, but uh, I could be wrong. Yeah. I'm going to go and take a look. <laughs> yeah, so it'll be a cease and desist. So I'll give him a cease and desist tomorrow. And ask him to and come, then come the to the next meeting. Yeah, the, the August 20th meeting. Yeah. Is there any stabilization, Andy? Do you think that needs to be done with that uh, cease and desist? I'll, I'll look when I get out there. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah you right might add that if there's any erosion right. control. It's maybe. clearly a, a, a sluice way there that looks like it's going to take. Yeah, down the yeah. middle. Yeah, right. I think there is a cut there. Yeah. All right. All right, Andrew. Okay. All right. So. Where do we want to hop back up and do the orders of conditions? Yep. Do we have anything to sign here? Yep. Sure. Yeah, they should have. There should be two. Two. Two orders of conditions. Mm -hmm. eight, eight Northland. Yeah, There's Eight Northland two. and uh, Julio Drive, because they, they gave me the number. So. Julio Drive. And uh, the negatives we can. And then the two negatives here. Yeah. Compliance. There are a few. We have uh, seven, I think, all in total. Okay. Um, most of them pretty straightforward. That's good with all of them. Yeah, 951 Main Street, 955 Main Street with two single-family homes. Those are fine. Uh, 28 Green Street was a septic system. We got an ASBO from the engineer's <coughs> certificate of compliance letter from him. Um, there was two old ones from an old subdivision that was done, Claremont Circle. Um, that's 21 Amherst Road and 8 Claremont. They're all tied to the subdivision, so we've been issuing, looking through the file partials for each building as they, as they need it because they've closed. So there would be two partial certificate of compliances for those two. Um, 65 Grove Street is uh, pretty straightforward and King Street. So okay. there's, there's copies of, if you want to look at the, the yeah. submissions. But Where are the signatures pages? Mm, I don't know right here. They're all in order if you... Oh, right. Yeah, they all came, basically all of them came with accompanying letters and photographs, yeah. so they yeah. kind of made life a lot easier. Yeah. Tail and the two on Amherst Road and Claremont, which is they're from 1980s. <clears throat> she should have sort of seven to sign, I think.
just this thing so far. I put it on the back. Uh, mm -hmm. Did you miss that one? Oh, that's just a certificate of compliance. No, it's a certificate. There should be six of them. Seven of them, sorry. Yeah, I did actually. I put the address in. I just printed out the right number. Uh, <clears throat> extension Maybe. yeah this was for 25 Kingston Street um, it actually expired in May 2016 I mean of this year yeah um, so I had yep. suggested that we want to entertain it but I guess yeah we in the past uh, have not given an extension if it's been expired the, it just time? it just and expired it, in May it, so it's the regulation the regulation I believe uh, I checked it out with Jeff how, uh, today, and he said uh, that has been the way we handled it in the past. And so, unfortunately, uh, it's a new filing. So, uh, uh, why has it not, has anything happened with that? It's it's been on hold for a while. It's kind of it's a strange lot. It's a paper street, so they've had yeah. some frontage issues. I believe the septic's in at this I, point. Oh, oh, Jim will tell you all about it. It's, <laughs> it's another one of Jim's, so that was my I didn't realize you were still here. <laughs> so, yeah, it's actually a friend of mine's building it for himself. He couldn't make it here tonight. He's almost here, so I would do it. Um, what happened was is he designed a house. They started construction. He bought it. It was, you know, the beginning or the end of the year. Um, bought it. They started, con uh, with, they put the septic system in. Um, they cleared it. They cut the driveway in. They put the hay bales in, the cell fence in, the DEP side. Mm -hmm got everything in, um, prepped the area where the foundation was gonna go, and then he was waiting for his design from the architect. He went to Brazil for the uh, winter time, came back and found out that the order of conditions expired mm -hmm. while he was away. And he's, uh, he's like ready to go, like re ready to put his foundation in and go, but he just found but out. But I, I, I think, you the know, yeah. he's done. I mean, that, is that unfortunately. Is that a matter of our protocol, or is that a matter of the law? I think that's a matter of the law. You're oh, supposed right. to have an extension before okay. that expires. Yeah. Would you agree I mean, with I, that? I have done it in the past at other commissions, but if that's the person huh? of the commission, I mean, I've done yeah. it in other towns, but that doesn't mean it's it's one of those gray areas because I mean, I, I mean it's still act as an active order. I, I wouldn't have any problem issuing it if it was it, legal. It, yeah. Well, I, I wouldn't either. No. But I, I mean, I checked, and I guess in the past we we haven't done it. If it's you got to get. The extension request in prior to it. Okay. I mean, we, we can we can double check tonight. We're not no. going to yeah. vote no, on it. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't we do that? We'll double check okay. the regulations to make sure there's no I mean, way. That yeah. I mean, it does say be. only unexpired orders, conditions, or extensions may be extended. But sometimes I notice oh, that. Okay. Sometimes it depends on the filing date of when it was submitted. It was submitted before, which I think was just after the <coughs> yeah. the date. So it's kind of. Like, yeah. Unfortunately, so. if we could do it, we would do it. I think yeah, we're, we're trying. If, if we can, if we can, we we, we will. But, okay. but then it always yeah. becomes a question. You'll get someone next month who's coming. You know, it might be quicker just to file for a new one. It's the same submission. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So, yeah, I'd probably just I'd probably just file it again. If we can. Oh, absolutely. No. Yes, sir. You know when the order was issued? Would it be covered by any of the permit extension? No, I was in 2016 it was issued, so yeah, it doesn't come under the extension permit. Thank you. <laughs> oh yeah, that. Oh, okay, I I catch you. Yes, exactly. That's good. That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's before. Like, it's after that. But yeah. All right. Check with Andrew. All right. Yeah, we'll. Okay. Thanks. Enforcements. Uh, just other business. Um, as part of the Edgemere Crossing, there is an ENF. If any of the commissioners are interested in reviewing it, I mean, let uh, that, will that require any IR? It's going to yes. Okay. Yeah. So they just went. <laughs> yeah, the, we sent our letter in today. Yeah. Um, the certificate should be issued, and then yeah, they're going ahead. They're kind of doing that concurrently with all the permitting. So yeah. It's if, so. That was that. Um, just an update on 286 South Mid Sigmund Ave. That's the one that we denied last meeting. They did appeal it to DEP. So we will wait and see if they issue a super. That's, 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 that's a duplex on the corner, yeah. Yep. 
Um, and then finally, we have uh, an Eagle Scout. Here is Burnham, who wants to uh, do some bog bridges. Eagle Scout should have a merit badge just to sing through this. <laughs> yeah. I just figured it would be good. It's just bog bridges. It seemed pretty straightforward, but it is technically, you know, in a right. area. So I figured it would be good. So we have, we have some new business tonight. We have Barun <laughs> Sabaya. And you're an Eagle Scout, and you're going to discuss the proposed bog crossing on Blue Trail in Carlston Forest. Yeah. Are you okay. an Eagle Scout yet, or is this for your project? Okay. Uh -huh. All right, my hey. fault. Yeah. So I already promoted him. Okay. Job. See, I didn't know either. I never made it that far. <laughs> yeah, if you want to hand yes. it out, whatever yeah. you say, I mean, whatever you yeah. say was. Thank you. Yeah, surely. Thank you. It's just the same thing, yeah. <clears throat> You want to? You can sit or stand. Stand. Just stand you so want. Don't, yeah, don't. Yeah. Don't be shy. Yep. Just uh, <laughs> easier said than done, but. Yeah. Tell I mean, us. Oh, you actually have a presentation. Oh, I didn't know. I'm not okay. sure. It's okay. I can speak. Oh, if you want to flip the. Uh, just say I didn't realize because we have to have IT set it up because no one ever gets it to work. <laughs> um, so my name is Bruce Sabaya. I'm a resident of Seven Tobin Road Drive in Trinity, Massachusetts. And uh, I'm a rising senior at St. John's and a life scout with 2.14. And I'm here to talk to you today about uh, proposed bog or punching bridge, um, the Blue Extension Trail in Carlson Forest. Um, so the first picture or first slide uh, has a picture of the Blue Trail. And uh, basically, the Extension Trail runs in between uh, the right side of the Blue Trail and the left side on the next slide. Uh, there's a new trail that they've charted on there, and it shows the site of where uh, the boardwalk or punching bridge would be. Okay, so it cuts across. Arun, how many boardwalks? Um, so it's it's a 30 foot or 25 foot like section, and uh, it would be three pieces because of uh, the trail kind of bends. Okay. Um, <coughs> So w w what's the intent of it? Is it to replace a failed one? Is that, uh, is that what exists, just a couple logs going across it right now? Right now, that's a part of it. And then if you see behind that, there's also a log across the trail. And it's not as clear in this picture. I yep. have another one that I can't project right now. But okay. um, there's a bunch of rocks behind that log as well. Yep. So it's hard for uh, people to use that trail, like easily twist an ankle or something like that. Yep. And uh, one time I was on the trail, I was talking to a lady who was walking her dog, and she mentioned she doesn't use that trail because uh, she can't bring her dog in that area since it's uh, hard for the dog to walk around there. Yep. And uh, so I feel a punch in with Bob Bird should make it easier to walk there. Um, and we did check that there was an issue earlier about it not being on the uh, Town land, but we, I checked with the GIS, and I know that it's not on the New England Forest Reserve land, and it is on town land. Mm -hmm. And the, I have the parcel ID, and like, I think the address for it is 443R Main Street. And um, so on the slide, or after that, there's a picture of a bog bridge at Westboro, uh, Westboro's uh, Charm Trail, and uh, at the Mill Pond Park. And uh, that would be similar to what we're doing. Uh, I don't have to cross a, uh, a stream of sorts, but there is runoff that runs through the area when, in, during the rainy seasons. Um, and then on the slide after that, I have a sort of design. So it's fairly simple. I would use um, six by six posts. Uh, they come in eight feet, and I'd cut them in half to make two four feet sections to act as supports. Um, and then I'd have a uh, four by 12 boards uh, that come in eight and 10 feet long and I'd uh, put two of those uh, next to each other and uh, use uh, six inch aluminum nails to secure them to the uh, supports. And then um, there are areas on the trail where uh, it dips a little bit. And um, in those areas I would try to use, uh, and there, it's not flat ground because there's rocks and roots everywhere. So I would use uh, crushed stone and uh, these uh, uh, concrete piers that we can find at Home Depot, and I'd use that to stabilize the uh, uh, bog bridge right there. And um, uh, when I was talking to Mr. Truman when we had a meeting earlier, he mentioned that there was a, an issue about height, but uh, 
uh, we measured it, and 21 inches is the, the lowest point uh, from ground level that the uh, that the trail dips. So I'm not sure if we need a handrail up there. If that's an issue. Um, and we also would have to use, or I would have to use a eco-friendly preservative um, that the I've spoken to the trails committee, and they recommended that I use a eco-friendly preservative from Dalhalco, and um, I heard it's approved, but I just wanted to check that we're allowed to use that. Tom, do you do you know the what that is? The name uh, it's of called the chemical? Lifetime, I think. That's, yeah, it's called lifetime wood treatment, uh, non-toxic wood stain. We'd have to check on that one. Okay. Yeah. Otherwise, what would hurt if you just used uh, just untreated six by sixes? Uh, you probably would get ten years. I see you have an estimated life of ten years. Uh, that's with the uh, treatment, but that's with the treatment. Yeah, the I thought pressure treated wood would last longer than that. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't know if more of a pressure treated wood in no. this area. Would you go with that or um, pressure? Pressure treated has gotten a lot, a lot nicer for yeah. the environment over time. I, I would be comfortable with that. All right. If this stuff it might be even better than pressure treated, I'm, I'm sure pressure treated is. Uh, well, they make they make ones that non toxic. Then just coating it with something. Oh, it would be better. But yeah. I mean, I'm talking from a environmental standpoint. Oh. You know, in a sensitive well, area. Mm -hmm. Well, she's so, okay with pressure. Uh, there's, there's, there's decent pressure treated wood, and Home Depot should have it. Yeah. Um, so I think that's okay. That make you'll, it you'll, you'll want something that will last. That's right, because it won't rot as quick, and because right. rotting itself is. A and, yeah. <coughs> Did, it have you looked at a composite at all? Any kind of composite materials? I don't know. As opposed to just the wood? Because they would, they would last forever, but I don't think they have a lot, they don't, lot of structural. They don't structural, no. They need to be supported. Yeah, yeah they need something in lateral under them. flexible. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. they bounce. Especially they heat up to like spaghetti. They just bend, you know. Mm -hmm. but, uh, so how many of these are you proposing? Um, three, and then after this, I have another area I can talk about. Later. Okay, so there's three, three of these. In this section. Of this in this section. section. Yeah. And it's on town property. You yep. verified that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it, Andy, did you did you check to see if this is all town? We did because we were going back and forth. Okay, we thought so it was a New England you, forestry you section, in, but you bought into that. Yeah, that's because originally we thought we couldn't do it because it's New England forestry. Yeah, but it, it looks yeah. like this is technically on the town section. So okay. okay. And then all right. right. On the slide after that, uh, Mr. Gill from the Trails Committee uh, also asked if I could take a look at this area, and I wanted to make sure I would be able to do work here. Um, oh, so this one? Yeah, uh, Mr. Chairman mentioned at the last meeting that uh, there's an issue with like, diverting the water. Uh, well, that shading, I know you get into shading issues sometimes on wetlands. So. If you see in the top left corner, uh, the water comes through and then it kind of like goes along the trail and just forms a really big puddle in the middle. Yep. Um, and they, like, they try to put a rock at the end to stop it from continuing and that sort of thing. But uh, like every time it rains, it gets a little deeper each time. And eventually the trail's going to get messed up because of that. So uh, uh, one solution I was thinking uh, that we could do is uh, if we can divert the water down the trail so that it uh, cuts across uh, and still goes through under that log. But uh, if you see where the blue lines are, if we just move it down the side of the trail and then directly across instead, mm -hmm. and then build a small uh, uh, kind of structure to, for people to cross over the little ditch there. Ahead, Does that trail get used by wheeled vehicles? Um, yeah, but uh, Mr. Gill was mentioning that the trails committee doesn't really like wheeled vehicles there, so they, they would prefer that it would be like a kind of foot bridge like this wide so that wheeled vehicles wouldn't be able to get through that area. Well, wouldn't they just go around? That's true. Yeah. Make like their own yeah. path, yeah. Oh. So you're essentially talking about creating a ditch alongside the trail and then across the trail. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. And then to help people get across, you're proposing a footbridge? Yeah. 
Or just something uh, that's smaller than the cross of the gate. Yeah, I think a footbridge. Uh, you're, you're going to have, my guess is you will have people um, with, you'll have ATVs and dirt bikes challenging that bridge. Um, so I'm not sure that that would be a sturdy solution. I would wonder about maybe stepping stones, unless you have other ideas. By the bridge, are we talking the same two boards? Uh, yeah. Six by six? I think so, yeah. I don't know. Is that what you're talking about? another block bridge? Yeah. Just the, it's a pedestrian, basically. Just to get over the wet spot. So you're, you're yeah. only talking that wide, probably. Yeah. Width of a person. So, so the ATV could straddle it if they wanted to, you know, and go right over it. Might try and get a motocross to go across it, but no. Yeah, I mean, ATV. there's nothing to stop an ATV from going anywhere. No, they're going to go around it anyway. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, go around it. it's for the fun. Yeah, I mean, you know. Yeah, I would think if you're just going to do another bulk bridge, that would be. Yeah. Okay. yeah. The, the only thing is, why, why cut a channel, a new channel? You already have a natural channel paralleling the path. It's, I mean, it's a, it looks like it's a couple feet off of it. Why would you try to redirect it another couple feet away, uh, you know, just take the path that nature took, and then just improve the crossing of the trail. I'll pick it up at that point. Okay. Yeah, I was thinking, like, where that log is, cross where the, the path. log is. Move the path, yeah, instead of the... Oh, like yeah, you did oh. it where the, the log is right here. Yeah. The crossing right across there. It seems pretty narrow. Okay. Yeah. Again, you can set it up high enough so it won't get washed out. <coughs> yeah. Because once you start digging the channels, you could run into more problems. You well, know. That, that was my suggestion, because I, I think now it's a BBW, and then you get erosion control. Yeah, it's just exactly. Problems with all can of worms that we probably yeah. don't want to get yeah, into no, for a bump, bump trail. Just move the path a little bit and put in your bridge. Yeah. Okay. So, schedule-wise, when would you want to do something like this? Um, uh, I'll just do start with next month, and then try to finish by around mid-September. Okay. Do you think the best way to do this. I mean, it is uh, to have him just do a negative determination of applicable. I was singing an RDA, but I just wanted to yeah, at least yeah. present it to the commission yeah, so in RDA case there's anything. Yeah, official. And then you've gone through the whole process. Yeah, I, I would assume we would do an RDA, just, but I just yeah. want to make sure there was nothing in there, no red flags that jumped yeah. up. Pretty you saw cool. some of the people tonight, they came in for a request for determination of applicability. I can help you if you want to and, help. And it's yeah. not a full-blown permit you know, which is a notice of intent. And basically, from what you presented tonight, <coughs> and I can't speak for the other members who aren't here, but we would probably vote on a negative, which is good. You know, what the person asked, does a negative mean good? And yes, that means uh, you would not have to go with a full filing. They could do the work. But it makes it official. And it, the only problem is that we won't vote on it until next month. Yeah. Yeah, so you'd have to do it. should be enough time, I think. Yeah. It'd be August 20th, you'd get the uh, yeah. negative that night. So. Yeah. yeah. And take some of the comments we gave you tonight and retool this a bit. Yeah. Okay. And um, as far as the stepping stones go, could you elaborate on that? I'm not sure exactly. Oh, well, the, I'm, I'm just trying to, to figure out how the best way to get people over that that water without, if you have a footbridge, you're going to have to step up on it, cross it, and go back down. Um, the stepping stones would be big flat rocks that would go across the, the, it seems like a very narrow stream that mm -hmm. people would have to um, have to cross. So they could go in the middle of the stream, the water would find a way around them. It's a less intrusive way of doing it. It's a less it. intrusive, more natural way of getting people across. But, now but the other members yeah. of the commission were suggesting moving the path as well. But you should still use the stepping. You yeah. still, if you move the path a little bit away from the water flow, you're still going to need to cross. I mean, we've almost got. You're two, still going to need to cross so it. Some way, two so there's already two stepping stones already. There's already two there, so. Right, that, there, so. Big, right, that <laughs> big rock. Almost like you already have it. Yeah. So would the commission recommend stepping stones or the... Uh, this commissioner would. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Okay. And congratulations on your... 
August 20th and August 20th. Well, I'll do the paperwork before. I'll, I'll email you what you need to because you need to get okay. some paperwork in before, but yeah, I'll help you. Okay. Because we'll have to have, actually, you know, the RDA, we won't have to sign it because anyone can file an RDA. So we don't even have to have the town sign. need to vote on it. Yeah, no, I'm just thinking because the applicant is the town, but if it's an RDA, anybody can file. You don't have to. I don't think, you know, even if it's going else, I can always have Kevin sign it. So, yeah, so, yeah I'll, I'll work with you to get the paperwork okay. done. Thank you. Well, well done. Thank you for yeah, coming thank in. Thank you. Thank you. That's all I had. All right. Do we have anything else? Uh, uh, I think we got a few other. Is anybody out there looking to speak tonight? No. All right, Mr. Chairman. I move we adjourn. We have a second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat>